Okay, hi everyone. This is Neha from College Shortcuts. I hope you guys are doing well. I'm very excited to have Harmon on today. Um, what I want to do first, because I've had a few technical difficulties, is test out on my page to see that we are actually showing up in this process on the page. Now, if you can hear us and see us, type in yes in the comment box. That way I know that you guys can absolutely hear us and see us. So from what I'm seeing on my page, I am popping up, Harmon. So it looks like we are going Great. live in this process. I'm um, sure the issue is my fault. I apologize to the audience. That's no, okay. Here it is. We're, we're going well. well. Okay. Great. All right. So it's going good for now. Okay. So let's go ahead and just restart. Harmon, we'll go faster this time on the No stats. problem. All right. ACT score? 33. Okay. Rank at your high school? 14 out of about 400. Was it, it's mostly a private school or public school? It was uh, a public charter school. So okay. the, the, the best in the state at the time. Okay. And you were in Georgia, right? I was in Georgia. Correct. All right. And um, in terms of your college admissions counselor at school, how much guidance do they really give you? In a scale of one being none and 10 being checking every single essay? I would, I would, give, I would give her probably a three uh, in that at least she met with me. And she helped explain the repercussions of uh, misfilling the FAFSA as well as understanding some economic situations. Outside of that, zero help. Outside of, um, yeah, honestly, I, I take that back. I'd probably put her at a, at, a, at a three in terms she met with me and a negative one in that she really steered us away from some of the more higher level Ivy League schools for, fin you know, because she, she, her, she herself was uninformed of financial aid options and so on. Okay. And... You again said you were you were in like the top four percent of your grade, and you weren't Correct. applying to IVs when you had a thirty three all honors AP. Yep, I uh, I was kind of led into that uh, mythos that Ivy leagues are unattainable financially, and given my uh, family situation at the time, it would have been uh, important to have me close by as well as the the in state tuition aspect and. You know, now uh, after meeting you, after learning, like seeing, you know, guiding my siblings through this, I realized what a mistake that was. Yeah. So let's talk about your family background. So uh, your parents weren't born in the U.S., right? No, uh, my, both were born in India. They're first generation immigrants to the U.S. Uh, both of them were anchor immigrants in that they brought over the entirety of their families based wow. on their incomes. Uh, so, so they very much, they, they sandwich, there was sandwich generation. They gave their lives so that the entire family could, could, could move to America and I could have options and choices. Got it. And was English your parents' first language? No, uh, it was like, like the pin to Punjabi was the first language. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so I'm assuming they weren't editing your essays and no oh, one were I mean, they, offices were looking they, for it. They, were, they had to stop helping me with mathematics at about the eighth grade and literature at about the sixth grade, really when uh, that, that's just where, where I had to just kind of take over for myself. Okay. So really from what I'm hearing is it was really you on your own and you were the first one Yep, in the first family. one in the entire family to go to, to to a high school in the U.S., to go to to even apply to university in the U.S., uh, yeah. Okay, great. Everyone who's watching, if you can relate to this or any thoughts on it, please just type in yes, hit some likes. I just want to make sure our tech is working well. Um, and then in terms of, you know, you've got your ACT of 33, you know, it was mostly a public school, 400 kids in your grade. You were number 14, all the nurse APs, fives on those AP tests. You know, you were telling me some of your extracurriculars were jujitsu, skateboarding, hospice volunteering. I mean, you were doing all these different things, um, you know. So let's talk about the college admissions process for you. Um, you know, one of the things you were considering was the financial aspect of everything, right? Now, you know, a student like you, if you were going to work with a company like College Shortcuts, would have been applying to at least 10 to 15 schools, some in-state and then some out-of-state. What happened in your college admissions process trying to do it on your own with barely any help? Uh, I, I just remember being stuck at FAFSA for a little while because this was my first time having to like dig into, uh, you know, it, it, it took us a, like a, about a week to find my father's social security number just to start filling it out. Um, Labyrinth, Labyrinth and Byzantine is how I probably describe it. Like you have... You know, when when this is your first approach to these types of federal documents, 
it's it's very intimidating because not only do you not know what you're doing, you do have this sense of if I do something incorrectly, it could jeopardize my entire future. Um, it was it was it was it was really scary. Um, I'm I'm really proud that I I was able to get through it, so I can pass it on to my cousins and my my siblings who have not had anywhere near the same issue. And and I've actually had siblings go on to Yale and Harvard, um, which I'm intensely proud of and a little jealous. Um, but you know, and, and I, I definitely edited their essays. I definitely you know, I took I, I passed on what I learned. Um, but if if I had a resource like 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 college shortcuts, my life would be significantly different and better. I would have undoubtedly gotten into an even better school um thankfully you know i got very lucky and got some full ride scholarships and so on but um yeah no i i i I was alone and i had no no guidance whatsoever and the guidance counselor who was there had another 40 to 100 kids to deal with um and when you look at the, you know, someone like me who's acing every test and, and doing so well in APs and IBs, you're not the person that they give the most attention to because it seems like you're pretty competent. So it's kind of a catch-22 in that sense. Right. I know. So it's yeah. funny because they're so focused on the kids that may really not even get into college because of their background, but yet the kids that do really well, they're like, oh, I'm sure you're type A, you can do it yourself. Exactly. But in reality, these are the kids this is these are the kids I love personally working with because they are hardworking. So we know if they take the advice properly and follow through, they'll win. But they're not getting it because they're not the squeaky wheel or yeah. the messed up kid that's not that's making D's and F's that they're like, oh, I hope they get into somewhere. So they're not getting that competitive edge in the process yep. of really knowing what it's, to do. It's a lot likened to like like I I had to hammer out. Uh, some sort of vehicle with with my bare hands and whatever I could find lying around and had I had college shortcuts I, I feel like it would have been more of a Henry Ford you know assembly line situation where like yes. just the steps are so you know like just forget even having someone like you behind it just to have the steps laid out just to have the steps laid out would have saved me weeks so much stress you know my parents so much stress my parents were you know we're, we're probably having a worse time of it than I did because they felt helpless that they were unable to to really get involved and help guide me and and that every question I had, you know, at some point I had to stop asking them and then they're the ones now asking me. And the, the most empowering feeling I had was after, you know, I got into university, then come two years later, my ne- the, the next oldest cousin applied and his parents called me and I was the one who answering all those questions. I was the one screen sharing and filling out phosphos for everybody in my generation. Wow. Um, and, and I, I guess I, I definitely see the benefit like just, just to, ha- just to have even like one call would have been, would have just been wonderful. Um, especially when you, when, you know, when you compare yourselves to your much, you know, like your, your, your much more privileged and established friends whose families have, have been to Ivy leagues and have so, you know, connections and so on. Um, you know, I, I distinctly remember one of the graduation lunches and, and, you know, they invited, um, you know, like, like they invited their, uh, their tutors and they're like, you know, like the people who helped them. And I remember just being like, wow, like, you know, I, 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 I'm lucky that, you know, my cha-cha from India came, like, I don't have anything, anything, you know, anything like, like, uh, you know, like, this, yeah, yeah. At the table, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, wow. yeah. So, so it was, I, I was very lucky and, and thank God I had the type A go get them attitude that I was able to figure something out. But I had, I had the tools I would have been able to make something much more refined and much more efficient and and just, just much more effective. Right. So, you know, the colleges you ended up going to were definitely, I would say to the level at which your academics and extracurriculars were and your passion and go getting attitude, there's no doubt in my mind you would have gotten into an Ivy league. So I don't mind saying that. So No. Um, So uh, so a very, very large portion of my friend group and my entrepreneurial groups are all Ivy league graduates and across the board. The the thing that hurts the most is that when they ask like, why, why didn't you go to, you know, an Ivy league? And I was like, you know, at the time I didn't know about money or how to, how to do it or anything. And they all say you would have, you would have gotten in no problem. You know, there's been so many idiots that got in and you did not And it, it, you know, you, you brush it off, but I, in this one Facebook live post, I will, I will publicly admit that, that it, it sucks. It really sucks knowing that like you left some potential on the table. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, 
And also, I think one of the big things parents aren't thinking about, and now you're obviously out of college and, you know, et cetera, is that the opportunities and the network that you get from going to a top university. Can you speak to that as someone who's a mover and shaker about why college can make a big difference, especially for students who are going through this the first time? They only see things right. They only think like, oh, I just want to get in. But can you give the perspective to parents that are like not understanding what it really means, not just getting in with the name brand school, but the effects of it later on in your 20s and early 30s? Yep. So I can I can tell you right away, uh, you know, I, I went on to build a multimillion dollar business. And towards the end of it, when I was hiring for my my executives, the, if, if there wasn't an Ivy League on the on the resume, I wouldn't I, we wouldn't look beyond that. Um, I know that that very much follows on. To, to this day on the next level. So now as I transition into tech executive positions, um, you know, international tech executive positions, I have to really, really work my network as hard as I possibly can just to get considered. And I know that my peers who are, you know, aiming for the same companies, this, you know, the same international opportunities, you know, they have a significantly easier time. Uh, their networks are significantly more powerful and have a, a lot more like like heft behind them, such as uh, for me to, like, you know, I, I was interviewing at, at um, the company I was just recently working for. And for me to get in there, I had to work my way up to have a personal relationship with a executive there and then leverage that to just get an interview. Uh, I had two friends who were also aiming to, to join me in that company with had, that I, I, Ivy Leagues on their, on their resumes that applied and were called back literally within 24 hours. Um, you know, and then one of them happened to, you know, to know a guy who went to Stanford who was best friends with the CEO of the entire company. And so for him, it was literally call that guy to call his friend. Um, the power of an Ivy League extends twofold on the broadest levels. The primary one is the brand recognition, which is intensely, intensely real. Uh, but the secondary and probably the more important one is your social networking. Uh, not only, you know, so, so not only do the, do the people that I keep around me that, that, are, that are from these Ivy League schools, not only do they have a level of sophistication that far exceeds anybody that I went to school with, but they also understand how to, I, I think it's the word is finesse social situations. They understand how to leverage that resource of, of, their, of their school name and use it the right way. So it's not just, oh, I have it, I'll slap it on my, my resume and, and I'll get some callbacks. It's also, I have it, I have this extraordinarily powerful resource. And while I was gaining this resource, they taught me how to make use of it. Correct. So, yeah. So this is a great this is a great point. And I think one of the things that we know about each other is we we came from different backgrounds. Right. I Certainly. went to a right. I went to a top private school. Um, one of the things that I was taught as early as third grade was the power of presentation skills, packaging and the way you come off and branding and marketing. And um, even as I went to Rice and was a triple major, again, very much finessed throughout the time. And it's one of the biggest problems that I see every single day, not just with students going from, you know, high school to undergrad, but even college to grad school, and then even when applying to jobs. So, you know, when parents will say, well, I don't see the point of this service or why we should do this, the skill set of packaging properly can make all the difference. So like in your case, you went to UGA, you built a multi-million dollar company, you sold it. If it's not written in a certain way under resume, yep, it doesn't. Yeah, so so part, you know, one of the top uh, tips I got for when I was looking to transition into executive positions was to push my education down to the bottom and yep. lift up my experience over it because the yeah, education your education would be at the yeah, bottom and your absolute experience bottom. literally yeah absolute bottom of bottom. the like not where you put skateboarding. Yep, right? exactly. <laughs> right, well, let's exactly. all be real. You uh, would put UGA down there. But you would have put, you know, name, email, phone, blah, blah, blah. You guys, you know, I'm a resume freak. I have my whole template that I've been using for years and it works every time. But I, <laughs> I need to get this template. <laughs> <laughs> Let me send you that template, Armin. Yeah. I'll uh, get that on you. But, but yes, it makes a big difference in the way you structure it. It makes a huge, huge difference. I mean, when the difference between when I came out of a university and my peers who went out of an Ivy League, they were much more refined. 
they were much more skilled in terms of they were much more confident and at the end of the day like that's the tough thing to put a number on is that like the level of confidence that that transitions to your interviews to your interactions with others right like forget the fact that coming out of an Ivy League you're already placed at the tip top of of the percentage of everybody graduating in your year but you're 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 at the top because you're coming out a finished product that is ready for the market that knows they're ready for the market versus being pushed out of uh, you know like a degree mill with being like great you check the box of you know if a degree now throw it somewhere on your resume just so you can say you have it and like try and find a job right i'll tell you a great example yesterday i was at an event <clears throat> and it was a event with like executives from the universal studios um you know like all these like massive music uh brands and there was someone that was sitting that was like a massive executive at live nation uh and managed it all mm. we were talking we we're having a good time chatting he's probably in this like late 60s 50s like retired lives in the nicest neighborhood etc and then somehow he's talking about his son and how he's going to grad school we're not talking about college names and i'm like oh that's so cool you know i went to rice he goes you went to rice and i was like Yes, that's not the reaction I usually always get. He goes, my son went to Rice. Do you know David Lebron? I go, absolutely. My cousin went to Columbia and David Lebron was the president. And so when I was there, we were buddy, buddy. We ended up taking him to India because he was looking to expand into India to bring in more students internationally, the right oh. kinds of Rice. And he was just listening to me and was like, what did you study? I was like, I was a triple major. I was a total nerd. And here he was just being like, do you need anything? Do you know kids that need to go to the music industry? How can we assist with those types of students? Bryce, that's one of the best. Like, it would, like, he gave me his freaking cell phone number. Do you know how many people would die for that number? Now his son went from Rice. He's a total scientist. He's now at MIT grad school. He was like, he had the pick of the litter to go anywhere he wanted afterwards. So I think one of the biggest problems most parents are thinking is they're just thinking like, you know, what are the, one of the things I hear a lot, and you're going to be floored when I say this, I was talking to a mom um, named Shopi recently. And she said to me, you know, Neha, um, you know, my kid made a 34 on the ACT. So not that great. Oh, it's not that great. Yeah. I know. Listen, listen. Sounds like, sounds like my parents. All right. <laughs> <laughs> really? Cause I was like, uh, she deserves a cupcake. Then <laughs> she goes, yeah, she's doing okay in school. You know, I'm just listening and taking notes. And I go, oh, okay, so does she make like C's? And she goes, no, she makes all A's, but like one B plus. I'm mm. like, okay, so that sounds pretty good. She goes, yeah. I go, what rank? She goes, oh, top 10%. You know, it's just, she's just, you know, we're in Ohio and it's just, she's not that competitive. And I'm literally in my mind being like, does she not know she's, her child's this beautiful little golden nugget that but she doesn't, she, I, she doesn't know. She doesn't. Why? Because our parents did not grow up in this same environment, this rapidly changing environment, right? So, like, like I'll admit right now, the the whole admissions thing is even more selective than I went in, and it's only gonna it's gonna get more selective, and it's only gonna right. evolve and change and change and change. And when you're putting in my parents' positions, when they're working just to keep the family afloat, they don't have time to like check what the newest FAFSA thing is. They don't have time to understand what the percentages of acceptance are. The, the truth is that this woman honestly probably did not fully understand the potential of like, of like where, where she stands. And this. Yeah. It's and, probably, yeah, go on. No, keep going. Sorry, my bad. So no, this is probably honestly part of the 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 seed that that grows within, like, with, especially within uh, children of immigrants, is this concept of, like, our parents are constantly pushing us to be greater and greater and greater, and that does translate out both positively and negatively. And and in the positive way, it makes students like this girl you're talking about. But at the same time, the person who's pushing you to become greater and greater and greater does not have a relative scale of, okay, like greater and greater. Now you've hit this point, you're better than just about everybody else. We should keep pushing, right? But but right. at this point, we know you're, you're better than everybody. Let's keep going. Like for them, it's just no, like if you can be doing better, that means somebody is doing better than you and you need to be doing better and better and better and better. <laughs> Welcome to my childhood. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I, I mean, tell me about it. Um, I mean, seriously, and, but this and, is what's interesting about it because I was literally like, and she goes, so, you know, since she's made a B and, you know, we're, we've just ruled out all the Ivies because, you know, in the top 15 schools, yep. Yep. because, you know, really, you know, they don't take kids that don't have perfect scores. And, and I'm listening to her like she's so incorrect. It's painful. And then the second part is she goes, also, 
I just don't want my child to feel rejection. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, what are, I, your I thoughts, <laughs> what are your thoughts about the fact that rejection is probably one of the most important things to learn? And the second is, you lose a hundred percent of the shots that you never you take. don't exactly that. So that, that at the end of the day, that's it. So what I ended up changing was, you know, I, I very much had the idea you, you shoot for what, what you can and, and you take what you get, but I didn't even know that I could shoot for, for Ivy leagues. So I can understand. But how did you not know that? Based on I, your scores. Cause, 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 cause your nobody parents, around me, nobody around there? me. Weren't your parents sitting there being like, look, I took a little piece of coal and I turned it, I don't know what diamonds no. are made of. Honestly, <laughs> they're made out of coal, but, but, uh, you know what, I but, made a little diamond. No, ah, like weren't no. they sitting there researching the websites all night long? No, all because, okay, time? no, they, they weren't one because, you know, every website that you go on that's publicly available, one has very default and vague wording, right? So none of it was directed towards, hey, are you the clueless, you know, immigrant who has a great son who's doing really well and need need to figure out what's possible for your child? Or, you know, like, like none of that existed. And when you when you dug in and and you know, I I'm sure that there may have been like some like off brand version of college shortcuts maybe around back then. Uh, but like, like, and, and when they were confronted with that, right, like, so they put me in Cumon and all that other stuff. And yeah. it, it, didn't, oh, it, it, it didn't, it didn't work for me. I was, I was, <laughs> I, I was so far beyond the, you know, so, so for them, it's like, oh, another paid service run by like some random person we don't know. And, you know, like, there's no, like, you know, there's no guarantee, you know, unless you're doing some of these unethical things, there's no guarantee <laughs> that, uh, so, that, that you pay this person X dollars that then every dollar actually really does count. Um, and, and your son gets X, Y, Z, right? Like it, it just, it just, it wasn't in the realm of, of the, you know, of, of, of my particular family's like, like knowledge at the time. But here's my question. You said that you went to school and there were other kids that parents went to Ivy's. They had their tutors there. You knew they, I mean, I guess you found out only later they had college consultants, correct? They, they definitely did. Did uh, they tell you about it? They they did they did when when we when we finally started after? getting acceptance yeah no when but we after finally, yeah after it wasn't after. during it wasn't it during was like not, hey no, Hardman want to no. use my consultant are you kidding me like I would have I would have been sh I would have I would have been shocked I would have been thinking along the lines of like you know like the truth was though I was the only Indian kid in the entire school I was so, the only Indian kid so, in my grade there was me my other cousin and my other cousin from the same school. So, so, so you can imagine that that you know, in my in my life period growing up around around this community, there've been there've been moments of of like that of, of cultural difference where you know I'm like mom, like why don't we have such a nice house or go on these whatever right? And then and you very much come across you know their families have been established here for so long, blah blah blah. They're not bringing you know their cha cha and all of his everybody over and everything like that. They they only have like it's it's two parents that went to a very good university with great professional jobs with one one child to like pour <laughs> all their time into. <laughs> We've got you, your sister, and all your cousins, you know, and you, so on, so on, so on. Um, and and so so it was. I, I don't know. My entire environment was built up in that. Like, I am I am in the same circles as these in these these rich white people because I'm because I'm through sheer blood and and sweat. Uh, and all of the resources from like the, the nice house, the lack of like, you know, parental or financial stress, the, the knowledge, you know, the, the, the meeting people who've been to Ivy Leagues uh, and so on. That was, a, that was an environment that like, there was a very clear line of like me hanging out with them and then the actual lives that they lived. Um, and would so you say, I, would you say that education is an equalizer? Oh my goodness. Absolutely. Like it, it, it is, it is, it is the, it is one, one, it's the one thing that nobody can take away from you. And two, it is the one tool that will never dull. It is, it, you can always, always fall back on your education, especially if it's something you're passionate about. Um, but, but education, like, so education is, is not just the great equalizer. It is, it is the great lever of leverage such that those same extraordinarily wealthy kids that I went to school with have more or less done 
some of them have done great things with, with their Ivy Leagues. Some of them have fell, fallen out and done absolutely nothing. And so when I now go to the same people for their new, you know, house parties and their mansions or whatever, it's like, oh, you know, what have you been doing? It's like, I've been working this nine to five, you know, job that, that really doesn't access any of my potential or my skills. What have you been doing, Harmon? Well, I just sold my company to an international conglomerate for X million and so on. Um, and 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 the, the the basis for all of my my company's successes and everything has been at the end of the day like just pure education and and the the skills I learned from educating myself, of right? Course. So being yeah being able to jump into a new situation and learn on the fly and learn fast and learn like you know and and then be able to translate my learnings to somebody else, right? Like, would that- you say yeah? Would you say that even with that hustle, that drive, all of that, that the one thing that probably would have helped you more is understanding finessing as you are going through the interview process again. Yes. Like I, if all the I'm, way down, I'm, I know this sounds crazy all the way down to what to wear. Oh my goodness. You, what to, I'm still, I'm, I, I might, Neha, you may need to start a separate business to teach me just what to wear. Um, but, <laughs> oh but my no, God. It's my I, favorite thing to make I, over students. It's not even funny. You well, know, I have my, a whole course on this. I literally have a course on how to interview. I'll share it with you, Herman. Uh, but we'll, literally we'll, we'll what I do to, is yeah. I walk up in the, in my course and I'll do it. I'll do it on this class. Cause it's funny at one of my interviews, as I'm sitting there, I'm like, so I'm so excited about, uh, interviewing today at Harvard. Um, and I'm just like really excited to be here. So all of a sudden you notice energy is different. My voice was different. I don't sound as serious. You're grinning because you're like, oh my God, she looks like a different human. Absolutely. I don't look as, I don't, <laughs> I don't look as professional, right? So I do this in a very hilarious way. And teenagers that watch that video, even if their mom, look, my mom used to be like, go put a shirt on, you know, like didn't work. I was a hard charging teenager, super stubborn, not, not ready for someone to be telling me what to do. But this, I've had so many parents tell me that Neha, that just those few videos and my little guidebook on like what to wear and what not to wear, and then having questions ready, so, showing, you know, showing that you're interested in that specific job, internship, college, whatever it is, all matters. So absolutely. my question to you is, wouldn't you say that even right now, later on, if you had worked with a company earlier on that really specializes in this, right? You're the math science geek, right, Harmon? We can, we can be honest about that. I am not the math science geek. I made all A's, honors, AP, all that. I could have gone into medicine. But where my superpower was, was what would you say my superpower is, Harmon? Oh, no, don't put me on the spot like this. But you know people. <laughs> you know people and you know how to get what they want. That's the best way I can put it. Um, you get people what they want. Uh, but speaking in terms of just, just talking about dress, yes, because this has come up in my life very recently. So one, uh, just trying to lose some weight, uh, and, and realizing that my own clothes have stopped fitting me so well. So like, and you know, having your dadima, your grandma, you know, always mention, we know Harmon, you took your shopping. I'm like, you know, all right, grandma. Uh, (laughs) but, but most recently I had a, um, one of my, my dearest and closest friends and uh, we were, we, you know, we, we spent uh, a lot of time together in Africa. Uh, she's a graduate of Yale and, you know, and she was, she's one of the ones over the past two years who's very often mentioned that like, oh man, I can't believe you didn't go to an Ivy League. You would have been a shoe in, right? Uh, I was, I was, she was talking to me about what she learned there and she specifically mentioned how to dress and look sophisticated and for a lack of a better word, rich, like look, look like you don't need it. Um, and, and, you know, and we were laughing because this was us exploring building a small business together where we were going to import uh, mass produced Chinese pearls into the U S mm-hmm. and the market that we were targeting. And, and this is, you know, this is a burgeoning little business we're putting us putting together is, is women like her who had no, who had no idea uh, of, of like, of all of the the peers that they meet at these Ivy Leagues that are like, you know, the president, the president's son, or like just this very rich family or whatever, like, like she had no idea how to mingle with them. And it took her a solid year, her freshman year to really understand and break through. And part of that was an entire revamp of how she presented herself and what mm-hmm. she wore. And she was like, I loved pearls because they're so cheap, but you could, they make you look like you have money, you know, like all this other stuff. And, and it, it's to the point that it stuck with me enough that, that we followed up to, to to build a business around it, but like she was like that was like one of the key things that she hit on when when 
she was making me feel a little bad that I didn't go to an Ivy League. Uh, but she, you know, because <laughs> she's like, I just you know. be very clear, everyone. Even a top twenty-five university or top thirty university is still great. Rice is, and when Rice I is say, not an Ivy League. Just yeah, a heads up, but Rice's acceptance rate yeah. for in-state was less than eight percent this year, which was absolutely. harder than some of the Ivy. So it's not just Ivy's guys. Just to be absolutely. very clear. It is about top school that, you know, it's again, it's that network and and that big thing about packaging, right? Like, I think that is the biggest thing as we, I talk to so many parents, um, doesn't matter the gender, doesn't matter even the income levels. I mean, we talk to so many families because we have hundreds of families applying every single week with us. And the one thing we keep noticing is they, first of all, their teenager doesn't listen to them. (laughs) <laughs> yep, I, I wanted to run away to Australia, right? Uh, but, but go on. Right. And that's the first thing. So even if they have good advice, the kid's not listening. But then the second thing is that they can't, not only can they not, they can't impart the knowledge, but they're trying to give guidance and they don't even know, right? Like one of the things you said earlier was if I try to do this all over again, it is much harder to get in now than when you applied. And so, right. So one of the big things families will ask is like, well, do you have someone really old or like much more experienced on your team? I'm like on the back end, on the essay editing, we do. But number one, teenagers don't listen to people that are like 15 to 20 years older. Do they Mm -hmm. just don't? Why do you think I have to like look so young all the time? (laughs) And then the second thing is the fact that the closer they are to the admission cycle, the more they can even give advice than anybody else. So I literally hire people better than me. Right. I mean, you, you run your own yeah. company, right? Yep. Mark of so, any good entrepreneur. Right. Uh, so my whole team is millennials, right? People think millennials are, um, uh, millennials are just useless according to most people, but, <laughs> but no, so, so I can tell you, I, I so that when I say, you know, like making me feel bad, I don't mean that you're right, that, that anything less than an Ivy league isn't worth it. It's, it's one, it's your child's greatest fear, which they may not be able to articulate, which is that they are going to leave some of their potential on the table. Like that is my only regret regarding education was that I, le- I, I could have done so, so, so much more. And I just didn't know it. And I left that potential on the table because I didn't have anybody to talk to. And even if my parents had been able to talk to me about this, I can promise you as a moody 19 year old, I wouldn't have listened because in my head, what's going through it is like this, this person hasn't gone through what I'm going through. They, they don't know what, what this situ- what the modern situation is, even if they had gone to university 500 years ago or whatever. So like, why would I, why would I give your authority any value if 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 I know if I don't know that you ha- you have the pertinent experience? Because at this moment, like like your child applying for university is probably the most terrified that they will ever be, even whether they show it or not. Because they, at this point, everybody in high school knows that college very much defines a significant portion of your early adulthood options. If not, you know, and then ideally that 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 has repercussions your entire life. Uh, so, so there is a fear of, am I going to get into something good enough? Is, you know, is there a fear that I'm going to get into something that, that might seem a lot of fun, but at the end of the day, it doesn't provide, you know, I, I lose some of my potential. And, and if I'm going to open up, even now as an adult, if I'm going to open up to somebody about these fears and, and be very real about it, I need to know that that somebody can empathize to the greatest degree possible. Absolutely. Because if they can't, then one, I won't open up. And, if, and two, even if I do, what are they going to give me that's truly applicable, that's truly relevant and up to date? Right. Exactly. Yep. I know. And I feel like, you know, it's like anything in life. If you want to go ahead and do it on your own, be ready for a bumpy ride. Not, not just be, the first thing an entrepreneur learns, don't reinvent the wheel. Like, like <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, it's like I said, like I was trying to build this, this, this four wheeled car just to get to where I needed to go. And had I just looked over the hill at, at college shortcuts produced mass producing Ferraris, you know, like, <laughs> like the, it's still a car. It would still it would get me there hella faster too. It like does. like I, I got there, I got somewhere at least. Right. But, but, but I, I, I have how much time, blood, sweat and tears and how much of my parents frustrations and fears and, and stress did I cause building this crappy, this crappy little, you know, horse, you know, this rickshaw effectively to, to get me to where I need to go. 
Uh, and you know, not knocking the new rickshaw, like I said, it got you where you need to go. But like again, like why? Why did I spend all that extra time when when the key resource, the key knowledge has already been discovered? It's already been refined, and it's already been basically bottled in this very easy to use system. Right? Oh my God, I sound like I'm I'm selling your company, but but the truth <laughs> is that like that that if you know if if it's there and it's effective and it makes sense. Then you're you're honestly you're being insane by going any other routes because you have the most optimal route available to you, and you don't have to do you, you still have to do the work right. Like somebody still exactly. has to drive the the Ferrari. Yes. Right. Exactly. Like you Correct. still have to do the work, but your the tools you've been given make the work so much faster and easier, less stressful. That allows you to apply that same energy to being successful in driving the car, as opposed to constantly having to stop it, make sure the wheels aren't falling off, check out whatever. Like like I because there were I I'll never forget every year you have to redo your FAFSA. So every year I had this intensely stressful situation of like, am I even going to be in this school again? Like, I, I didn't know, right? Like, am I, am I going to, you know, my, are my scholarships going to like match? I don't know. I don't know when these loans hit, when what happens. Um, and and there's like, a lot, you know, there's I, a lot to manage on your own and it's very stressful. And I love the analogy of the Ferrari because in a way, you know, the child is the driver in the Ferrari, you know, they're already 16 They've already worked really hard to get the latest model. Mm -hmm. They've got the good scores, the good grades. But again, that only gets you in the door. If you don't package it right, it just doesn't matter. And what college shortcuts is, is we're that race car driver in the passenger seat that's like, oh, buddy, let's go ahead and hit this full throttle. Uh, Sorry, everyone. You may not know this. I'm a car enthusiast. So like to use car analogies really helps. So for all my boy and not that girls can't because I'm a girl and I love cars, but in general, for all my students that love cars or in general, this is a great way to describe it. One thing, Harmon, that we get a lot of questions about is, you know, especially after the college admission scandal is about, you know, our character as a company and the founder. Now, as someone else who's been a CEO, been an entrepreneur, sold a company, can you speak a little bit now that we've known each other for a good amount of time um, to kind of like, what you know me as as an entrepreneur because obviously there's different types there's the visionary types that like think all in the clouds and then there's you know different types so can you maybe give a nutshell for a parent who's highly skeptical or highly curious and are saying but who really is this and why should i trust my kid with them so i I'll, i'm going to i'm going to get into to, to who you are in just a second but the biggest the biggest rebuttal I would give anybody that's at all suspicious of college shortcuts or, or even you personally is that call, like, as, as, as much as I've known you over the seven years and tracked your business's growth and, and the successes that you've celebrated so widely, you don't need any unethical help. And not only do you not need it as an entrepreneur, I, I would very much consider that you don't want to share the, the, the ownership of the success your students have with, with this random person. So, so for, for your business itself, you guys are already succeeding in getting these children where they need to go, right? Getting a slightly easier route would, at the end of the day, it, it would be in the, more expensive for you. It would, it, would, it would make you more liable. You guys are already achieving it. You don't need any extra advantages. You have everything already. Uh, and you as an entrepreneur, like I said, you are extraordinarily good at getting people what they want. And getting people motivating people and getting in, getting them to the point. I think that you also very much realize, and this we can draw from from the background of we do have Desi parents, we do have parents who who've come here and lived the immigrant life and struggled and been to different levels of success. Is that 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 student that may you know that student that gets in gets into a university unethically versus a student that goes through you guys and gets there in, in an ethical manner is that ethical person is going to have a lot more like like what's the word um, a lot more skin in the game a lot more reason to succeed because they themselves like they know you, like the biggest thing is that like i think you know that it, it really comes down to the person so if that person gets there and knows that they got there while well, yes they, they call it shortcuts laid the path out for them but they trod the path so they know that when i'm here and i'm surrounded by the best of the best in the world i deserve to be here yes neha neha extracted the value out of me and helped me get here. 
but it's still at the end of the day my value the person that this this individual my potential my skills my intelligence that was shaped and guided to get here not i just you know not this like unknown variable of a person that was just thrown into the mix because they knew the right people and paid the right amount of money because that person all they know is that they might you know their parents will, will have their back and their parents are willing to throw money at them so like what's yeah. the point of trying hard what's the point exactly. of motivating yourself to to be because I, I don't know what i like about college shortcuts is that when you you do the follow-ups and, and you actually genuinely care so it's not just okay we got the kid into stanford forget about the kid next kid right like there is a follow-on story there is there is success i know, you know getting, i mean i'm interviewing some of my kids that, like yeah. john james i interviewed and he's got like a freaking beard and like he was five he was shorter than me he was five foot when we started he was a little seventh grade boy and now he's like a freaking man he works at a government agency he can't say the name because it's like private or whatever but like he was like neha i was the only freshman at my college that got accepted in this program and it's because the resume you taught me and how to write authentic vulnerable essays like it, your skills transferred over all the way. And what I love about even Megan, who's at her favorite university, got 20000 a year. And her parents are super loaded. She didn't need the money. But we just, you know, nine out of 10 students that we work with, and I know that sounds insane, but it literally is true. Nine out of 10 students literally get their money back in scholarships. Like our consulting fees are like zero, really. Actually, they're you basically are paying nothing to close to negative because we end up getting students at minimum what our yep. scholarship, the scholarship of what our fees are, but then even 10 X that like Megan got, I don't know, John James got 120,000. His dad was like a judge, like spent time with the presidents. You know what I mean? Like oh, he didn't need that money. this yeah. is all merit based. This is getting... merit based. Some serious FOMO almost. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Uh, uh, but it's, but like, no, it's, it's the fact just, that like you know. it, it's, it does work and it's there and you're right. It is the kid that has, it's the, it's like, um, it's like making the perfect goby, you know, you've got to have, you've got the cauliflower, but like the right yep. spices, if you put the wrong, too much chili, blah, yep. don't get yep. in, you don't get in, Dude, no one's going to eat that. Exactly. Right. So, so, so it's, it's not just the getting in, it's the fact that, that your, your skill, like, like the, the things that they got them in, <clears throat> carry them through to success. Correct. Because the truth is, Getting in is not success. Getting in is something to celebrate, but how many like, like the, the the great boogeyman of once you're in is that idiot kid that got in fr through privilege and is just smoking and drinking and partying yeah. his his four years away and oh uh oh on year three all of a sudden the GPA is too you know too shit pardon my is too poor and too low to to validate you staying in that university and all of a sudden like and I, I have this this is from personal experience i have a friend father is an anesthesiologist mother is a stay-at-home mom because why would you need to work at that point and 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 the kid was was pretty brilliant he was he was kind of case you know keeping pace with me up until about sophomore year of high school when he really stopped caring because he knew that he was going to get into his father's ivy league alma mater and he got in was super happy didn't get a single lick of scholarship or anything like that his parents paid his full way through and his junior year he dropped out and had to go to the local community college which there's nothing wrong with the community college on that level but but from having to having losing the potential because you're, right. you're literally a year and a half away from just getting the degree and 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 being successful and and you didn't develop the habits you didn't develop the motivation you didn't develop the passion or the fire or the yeah. or the knowledge of like i worked hard to get yeah. here I, I may have had the best tools but yet again like the, you know like i said the ferrari isn't going to drive itself yeah it's this kid had, I this think kid had a chauffeur and the, it's just a, you. Yeah. because yep. like that's the big thing i talk about even on a webinar anyone who hasn't watched it it's called shortcuts.com slash dream college the the passion is what matters in everything in life that's how i look mm -hmm. at it you know it's what's going to drive you to work seven days a week it's what makes most people successful you can't be successful and fulfilled in life if you don't have passion it's 100 percent true 100 percent true so uh, follow-up question to uh i'm just going to repeat the question because i know i interrupted you because i'm so I'm good sorry. at that um no i'm sorry because i always interrupt <laughs> um but Yes. So you've known me for seven years. Can you talk about me as an entrepreneur and my character 
and my background, my reputation a little bit, because I think a lot of people are just new. They don't know who Neha yeah. is and they're trying to gather as much information as they can. But as someone, you know, I know my students for seven to eight years, I would love for you watching me grow up and in our company as someone who has sold their company and has been an entrepreneur and watched growth in companies and invest in companies, um, just from your viewpoint. Ooh, okay. Uh, so, I w okay, so I would, I would preface this that especially in successful entrepreneurial networks, there is a high level of vetting and like, and, and, and reputational value. And I have yet to come across a single network that we've shared or anybody that's known you that hasn't said just wonderful, powerful things about how ambitious, energetic, overtly energetic, honestly, fiery, uh, and, and focused. Like, so, so and this is more, it's, you are focused, you are determined, you are like, like you get this dangerous look behind your eyes when you want to drive a, a, you know, a KPI or a goal home. And, and I, you know, like to, to the extent that, that I'm willing to put my own reputation and the reputation of my companies and investments behind your reputation. Um, I, I have yet to at any point uh, pick up, you know, so I, I'm a data geek. Uh, I know you log, you log behavioral data as you log every type of data. I've yet to pick up on anything negative in terms of your behavioral aspects towards your business, towards your students, your clients. I, I honestly, I, I don't think I've ever actually heard you refer to anybody as a client ever. I've only ever heard you talk about my kids, my students, <laughs> my babies, you know, like, uh, you know, I guess now, you, you know, your men in, in secret jobs and so on. Um, <laughs> Because, because, because the truth is that, like, like, and and this is where maybe we can have a different discussion of thinking at, you know, on a greater automated scale. But like, you and your business are incredibly personal, incredibly, like, like customized is is the best way to put it. And and the amount of effort and time I've seen you put into customizing things, especially you yourself as a CEO, are still so involved in the granularity of almost every single one of your students is is inspiring and, and it shows your passion it also makes me a little like okay we got to get this into a multi-billion dollar company someday so we need another 500 nehas where are we going to get them because you're like you know uh you have only 24 hours in a day um uh but but yeah so like like this this is this is not a product. This is this is not even a service this this is this is a almost a lifestyle this is this is a creation this is a bringing out of potential i think and, and i think that's what you do best is you're able to look at people see their potential and then whether it's through your clearly laid out amazing you know company that you draw it out or you get down there yourself and you smack it out of them and you 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 put you know like i said like you're you're right there next to them you know in that ferrari and you, you, whether it's going to be all right let's you know all right let's do this together let's get there or it's going to be like let's get there right now this is how you do it like this is how we're going to bring it out these are the habits that you need um and and i think this you know without spilling i guess secret sauce is that the reality of, of a lot of the things that you offer isn't is is just who you are is that ambition and that passion and that discipline that's the one thing that i greatly admire about you that you have and boatloads beyond that i do is this level of discipline is is out of this world and i think all of these traits translate out into your students and yeah. I can, I, you know, for anybody listening, I can tell you that, especially as an entrepreneur, especially when you talk to other business owners in private settings, it is one of the most rarest things to to be able to say that, oh wow, she legitimately doesn't see people as as an account, but she sees them as that student that needs to that needs to get to where they need they're going. Like they're gonna get there anyway. She needs, she's the person to get them there. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I was just featured in Entrepreneur Magazine. And, um, you know, they oh, titled, yeah. they titled the articles, a learning process and how, um, you know, the fact that the one thing that's always made us stand out is that there's always been a heart behind it. And, um, you know, and I, one of my biggest inspirations, my mentors is, uh, Oprah Winfrey, which is why when I built a school in Africa, it was a big deal to me because that's something Oprah had done. When I launched dream school TV, she had her TV show. There were a lot of things that I, I look up to her for one of her things she had said was, you know, I don't know if in this lifetime I'll have my own child because in the end, everyone that I interact with is my own child. 
So it's very true when I, you know, when I talk with past students or even students that are with us or even people that are on my team, I'm constantly just like, you know, we're, we're not like the buttoned up entrepreneur company or button up corporate company. We're not that like that. It's like, we say, I love you all the time, you know, because it is true. It's like, and one of the things that, you know, our team had put on the website, which I was like, wow, this is like really personal, but it's, I say your child's success is my child's, it, your, your child's success is my success. You know, like your child is part of my legacy. Like, and I say this on every call with families, like when you and I join this as a team, when we start to do this together, you know, we're, we're literally this, your child becomes my child. You know? <laughs> and, and, and to the audience watching, cause I, I can't see you guys. It's, it's, it's scarily <laughs> true. It was true. Six or six. I met you exactly. I think three weeks after I sold my first company. And I really? was, I didn't yeah, even realize that. yeah. Uh, and I still, you know, we, we met at the top of like that, that, that apartment building and the, yeah. Uh, and, and we were meeting uh, a bunch of my other entrepreneurial friends at the time, Melody and Manuel and all of them. And, you know, even in that conversation, I vividly remember you were so excited about, uh, I think it was this, this, um, a male student, I forget what age, but like, like, yeah, it is, it is the sum total of, of your conversations, of your thought cycles. Like most, <laughs> most of your processing, you know, power up here is going towards these individuals whose, whose futures you are guiding. You are, you are literally a, an in What's the word? Like a, um, y you are an intensely positive force in these people's lives, and it is—it's inarguable that that you make impact. Thank you. And uh, like I said, my my only and greatest regret in my education is not having access to to college shortcuts or something like it back then. Uh, I hear that you guys might be starting something for MBA or whatever. And, <laughs> we have, we have. And, and who, who I, you know, anyone watching this, and, and this, I'm sure this will be recorded somewhere. Like, hold it down. Like, when I, I'm shooting for my MBA in the next one to two years, and and it starts, it starts, it's going to start with college shortcuts. Good. Uh, yeah, no, know. no I, question. I have some great, um, great people on my team um, that have worked and do work at admissions offices. Um, th that are very skilled in the MBA program. And I think, you know, that's been one of the biggest forces is, you know, for a long time, you know, we just did Neha. It was the Neha show. It was the one-on-one -on -one with Neha or like the one woman show. And I we just got to the point where, you know, someone had asked me, Neha, when are you going to help more kids? And it takes a lot for me to let go of control as a woman. Uh -huh. I always want to be like, ah, I want to check everything. And that's when I started hiring. And, you know, I, I, like, as you say, Harmon, you're going through the hiring process yourself. Um, you know, I go through a thousand resumes to pick one coach on my team. I don't know any other team that does that level of discipline and detailed work. <laughs> I, I can say, knowing you personally, you do not suffer fools. So I can't imagine, I can't imagine the acceptance rate into, into college shortcuts as an employee is anywhere near as you know it's probably more selective than most ivy leagues honestly. it is it is uh, and, and i'm very particular because they are going to represent my me they're going to represent my energy they're going to represent everything um and they're going to translate it and they have to drive results better than i can uh which i know sounds intense but i my team knows that um i got this little message from this this parent it's so cute. Look, texted me directly. It was so funny. Um, he said, had the intro call with your head of consulting. Such a pleasure to work with. If first is any, if this is any indicator of, you know, what's going on, we're so glad we're working with your team. Hope this helps you and sleep with a smile and happiness. Cause I think my, 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 you know, new families know it's like, okay, we want to make sure that like welcome onboarding process is amazing. And, and I always try to make it very clear. So yeah, I'm very particular about that too. Well, Harmon, I am so glad to have had you on the show today. Um, you know, I know we went a little longer than expected, um, but it's been so great chatting with you. And, um, you know, I do believe that, you know, students like you exist all over the world. And we talk to a lot of families that have a similar background of yours where, you know, their parents didn't go to school here. They don't have legacy, but they have this really smart kid and they don't mm -hmm. have the perspective or they don't know what it looks like for kids out of 
the Bay Area or New York or Florida or Texas. And that's where mm -hmm. we come in to be like, hey, Harmon, you, you're about to look like every other South Asian that likes math and science. Let's gear this way a little bit or that way. And to me, you know, I just want to make sure in the world that, you know, my goal is obviously a million students and we want to build 100 schools around the world. Um, and I do believe that we're getting there. So I'm so grateful for you. No and problem. I guess just as a, as a last thing to anybody listening, yeah. um, it, it really comes down to, you know, you, you as a parent, and, and, and this is me seeing my parents and, and my, my uncles and everyone, you make sacrifices to make sure your child is in the best school district, that they are able to go to all the extracurriculars they need to, et cetera, et cetera. I think, honestly, like college shortcuts should be viewed along the same lines. This is you giving your child the best tools you can so they can reach the most of their potential they possibly can. Um, I, I, would have, I would have killed to have it when I was going to university. I will happily kill to have it when I look for my MBA. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, Harmon, thank you so much for being on the show. And everyone, if you are interested in working with us, we've got applications flowing through at collegeshortcuts.com slash apply. Um, please make sure to put it in. We would love to, uh, we would love to check it out. Um, I read every application uh, just because, again, it's a highly personal service and we want to make sure you're taken care of. So thanks so much, Harmon. And thanks everyone for watching today. Have a great day. <laughs> Bye, everyone.